Oh, mm, cough, cough. Everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform, or you can go to my official website at thereligioushippie.com. You can find economy rosaries on there, as well as some prayer journals, some mugs, etc. If you feel called to do so, please consider donating to help me keep The Religious Hippie ministry running. I couldn't do this without you guys. It is financially a lot, but I do want to continue putting out good content for you guys, and every little bit helps, so thank you so much. However, if you're unable to support the ministry financially, please consider liking and subscribing this video to help us with the algorithm. Thanks guys. All right, so today's video is five more ways that I personally combat spiritual warfare. Now I did a video on this back in 2022 and it went pretty well. A lot of people really liked the video, but over the last year I've discovered other ways that I have found helpful to combat spiritual warfare, so I'm sharing those with you today. But if you want, go ahead and go back to the previous video so you can watch that first and then come back to this one. Otherwise, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter what order you watch the videos in, but let's get started. The first thing about spiritual warfare we need to understand is that Satan is real and he's just like a lion prowling in the grass seeking the ruin of souls. So we do need to be vigilant and understand that Satan exists, demon exists, and it's not just the evil of the world like society likes to tell us, Satan does exist. And the best lie he tells us is that he doesn't exist. Because if he doesn't exist, then we're not looking out for him in the tall grass. So stay vigilant people, understand that Satan is real and he does exist. The second thing to understand is that we will be combating spiritual warfare our entire lives, whether it's small temptations or big temptations. We are the church militant, which means that we're going to be on this spiritual battle until we die. We also need to understand that some seasons of spiritual warfare might be worse than other seasons of spiritual warfare. Some spiritual warfare could actually look like being attacked, being scratched, all of those things, or it could simply look like not wanting to pray. The biggest thing we need to understand is that Satan knows our weaknesses and he will use our weaknesses against us. So any grave sins, vices, physical suffering, mental health challenges, self-doubt, etc., he will do his best to use those things against us. Now it's important to understand we should not be looking for Satan under every single rock in our lives, but we do need to be aware of it and definitely not take it lightly and not overlook the fact that it might be spiritual. But the first thing we always want to do is we want to rule out physical causes and things like that. So if you sprain your ankle and the next day your ankle's swollen, well, that's not Satan. But let's say you twist your ankle and then the next week you twist your wrist and then the next week you break your leg and then the next week you break your hip. That might have something more to do with it and you might want to consider talking to a priest. It's just important to stay close to Christ, Our Lady, the sacraments, and the church in general. We really need to prioritize a good prayer life even when we don't feel like it. I know that can be difficult, but it is really important, guys. Also, I want you guys to understand that God has Satan on a really tight leash. Satan can only do what God permits him to do. So some of you guys might be asking, well, why does he permit possessions or why does he permit blah, 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 blah. It's for our sanctification and to turn towards God. We cannot be the church militant or strong warriors for Christ if we have no spiritual muscle. We need to exercise our will and keep it in check. And we do this through practicing virtue and combating spiritual temptations and warfare. The first thing we want to do if we are in a situation with spiritual warfare is we want to be in a state of grace. This is our first line of defense, is being in relationship and friendship with God, not having that cut off or severed through mortal sin. I know that I kind of mentioned this in my first video when I talked about the sacraments, but I don't think I was explicit enough. Get in the state of grace, be in the state of grace, and stay in the state of grace. This is our greatest defense against Satan and his lies. In simple terms, being in a state of grace means that we have the grace of God in us. You're not cut off from him by mortal sins, and being in a state of grace is necessary for a soul to attain heaven. Now, some people have come to me and told me that they have gotten more attacked when they're in a state of grace, and I'm like, well, yeah, that's kind of gonna happen because guess what? Satan doesn't want you to be in friendship with God. So he's going to do everything in his power to try and bring you out of that state of grace and into mortal sin, which might look like him doing everything in his limited power, literally limited, to keep you from going to confession, making a good examination of conscience, having a good prayer life, having a good relationship with God, Satan will try anything he can to keep you from doing that. So that might look like, oh, you know, oh yeah, you could pray right now, but 
don't you have a load of laundry in the washer? And then the next thing you know, you're in bed and you haven't prayed all day. Or it could look like, oh, I'm just gonna check my phone for five minutes before praying. And then you've been scrolling for five hours. And it could even come out as fear, being afraid to go to confession. Now I do understand the fear of going to confession, don't get me wrong, but it's important that we do because humility is so important and obedience is important to God. When Satan tempts us with a mortal sin and we comply with our free will, we are no longer in friendship with God. That's what mortal sin is. It's when there's grave matter, we know that it's grave matter and we use our free will and comply with it. That is what a mortal sin is. When we do mortally sin, we are cut off from God because we are no longer in friendship with him until we go back to him like the prodigal son did and we go to confession. Repent, do your penances and make reparations and repair that relationship with Christ. He's calling you to go to confession, come back to him. Now let's say it's been a little bit since you guys have gone back to confession. I have a lot of videos on confession I will link below for you, but these are my top tips for you. First, get a good examination of conscience. The Bulldog Catholic PDF online is perfect for that. I use that one, it's amazing, it's thorough, it's fantastic, and it walks you through confession as well. I'm linking it below for you guys. Next, find some time to go over the examination of conscience. This could take anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it's been since you've gone to confession. Be thorough and honest with yourself. Do not hide any sin and ask the Holy Spirit to open your mind, heart, and soul to anything that you have missed or anything that you do not realize is a mortal sin or a sin in general or a vice. I want to make this clear that if you go to confession and you willingly withhold a sin, that confession is not not valid and you leave with more sins than when you went into the confessional and you are in a state of mortal sin still. Do not hide any of your sins. The priests are not there to ridicule and make you feel bad. They're there to help you regain that relationship with Christ. Once you've gone through the examination of conscience, you can write down all of the sins that you have. Some people use their phones. I personally tried that, but I'm always afraid that a text message is gonna go off or something and distract me because I get distracted very easily. But I do know some people use their phones so they can delete it right away. Otherwise, you can write it down, tear it up, destroy it, burn it, whatever it might be. The next thing you want to do is figure out when your church is having confession. Sometimes some churches require you to schedule confession with a priest, which I don't think is okay. I think that's great if you really need confession, but all churches should have confession regularly multiple times a week so that people can actually go and it's not like at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. or an hour on Thursdays at like 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Like, I understand that some churches are unable to have multiple priests, and we're very blessed at Cantus to have multiple priests where we have confession almost every day. However, confession is very important and should be easily accessible to the laity when they need it. Now, once you've gone to confession, you've gotten absolution from the priest and you've done your penances, congratulations, you are in a state of grace again. I highly suggest you do some Thanksgiving prayers with God and you stay in a state of grace. This will help you tremendously with your spiritual warfare combat. Okay. So state of grace, that one's out of the way. The second thing we need to focus on is mortification. Jesus told St. Faustina, do not neglect interior mortifications. Mortifications means that we deny our flesh and do voluntary actions by which we gradually put to death all our vices and sinful habits. This means that we pair fasting and prayer together and we don't give ourselves everything we want. Our world is full of instant gratification and we really do need to go almost out of our way to practice mortification. Mortification can be small sacrifices made with great love. This type of love evicts Satan, and that's what we want. Let me give you an example. Let's say that every single Wednesday, you usually go to Honey Fluff Donut and get a chocolate-covered donut, okay? And that's just a routine you've had every Wednesday. But then you found out about mortification and you decided to exercise your will, which means we get to choose what we do, and you decided to give up that donut. It's a small thing, but it's still a type of mortification because we are not allowing our bodies to have that donut that we're so used to having every single Wednesday. And I want to make a little statement here that going to someone and be like, Yeah, 
yeah, you know, I didn't, didn't get my donut on Wednesday like I usually do, you know? I just practice mortification, man. That is not mortification. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 16. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Don't do that. Our mortifications should be private and they should be between us and God. Again, in a world that gives us everything we want at the press of a button, we need to seek out mortification in our own lives. So don't get that donut, don't put seasoning on your food, take a cold shower, learn discipline, and practice mortification. Number three, know your defects. Satan knows our weaknesses, but do we know our weaknesses? Do we know why we fall into a sin over and over and over again? Do we know what our triggers are? Do we know what our vices are? It's really important to know these things about ourselves, especially if we're living in habitual sin. I did a whole video on a beginner's guide to habitual sin, so I will be linking that below if you wanna check that video out. I tell you what it is, how to combat it, etc. But briefly, a habitual sin is a sin we repeat over and over and over again. It's become a habit hence habitual, and it's something that we feel like we no longer have any control over. I want to be clear that we do still have free will. There are still things that we can do, even though our will might be weak, that we can implement to keep us from habitually sinning. And I talk about all that in my Beginner's Guide to Habitual Sins video. It can be difficult to overcome habitual sins, but through prayer, dedication, the sacraments, being in a state of grace, and receiving the Eucharist, it is achievable. Now, it's so important that we are analyzing our defects and vices. Otherwise, we won't recognize the patterns and we'll continue falling into sin. Start by recognizing your defects. Are you prideful? Are you vain, lustful, lazy, etc.? What are the triggers for you when it comes to this? With lust, is it because of a specific TV show you're watching or because you have your phone by your bed at night? We need to figure out why these things trigger us and remove ourselves from those situations or prevent ourselves from getting into those situations. And then get to the root of the vice. The best way to combat a vice is through virtue because there is always a virtue for a vice. For example, humility cancels out pride, temperance cancels out laziness, and then of course, purity cancels out lust. Figure out what your weaknesses are because Satan already knows what they are and he's gonna be using those against you. The fourth thing you can do is binding prayers. Father Ripperger talks about binding prayers all the time and I highly suggest the book, Swords and Shadows by Charles Fraun. I suggest it to everyone who is ever dealing with spiritual warfare and even those who don't think they're dealing with spiritual warfare. It's a short book, but it's it is packed full of great advice. Anyways, binding prayers are very important. A binding prayer binds the demon that is afflicting you and casts them to the foot of the cross to be judged by Jesus. The binding prayer goes like this. In the name of Jesus, I bind you spirit of blank and I cast you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in that blank section, you could put the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of no self-worth, the spirit of gluttony, the spirit of lust, etc. Like whatever it might be, fill in that blank and repeat that prayer. I do want to reiterate with binding prayers though that you can only use them for people you have authority over. So you can use it for yourself. If you're a husband, you can use it on your wife or kids. If you're a wife, a mom, both. You can use it on your kids, but you can't use it on your husband because you don't have authority over him. If you're a grandma, I don't know, actually. So I just want to put that out there that you cannot use these binding prayers on anyone who you do not have authority over. So kids can't use it on their parents, but parents can use it on their kids. It's yeah, a little disclaimer there. Don't wanna get into spiritual trouble. And number five, the last thing I wanna mention is sacramentals. I know that I mentioned the St. Benedict Medal in my last video, but I want to go in depth a little bit more and mention holy oils, holy salt, holy water, exercised water, medals, sacred images, and other sacramentals. I also wanna warn people not to be superstitious about these sacramentals. Sacramentals, according to Canon Law 1166 states, sacramentals are sacred signs by which effects, especially spiritual effects, are signified in some imitation of the sacraments and are obtained through the intercession of the church. Any grace that comes from the sacramentals comes from God, not the sacramentals themselves. It is simply a tool that God uses to deliver his grace to us. So I highly suggest you go get some St. Benedict medals, some miraculous medals, some holy water, holy oil, holy salt, well, actually it would just be like olive oil and then salt and then water and then you take it to your priest and then he blesses it. You don't just automatically get it because if you buy blessed items, that's actually sacrilege. We don't do that. Don't sell or buy blessed items. 
don't do that. But I highly suggest you get sacramentals and you use them. There have been countless stories of saints using sacramentals against Satan. He hates sacramentals. So parents, bless your kids. Husbands, bless your wives. Pray together. Pray together as a family and use the sacramentals regularly. With all that being said, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye!